Right. We are here for the extended version of the show today, back with my friend, Drew Berman. Drew is a peak performance coach, and he deals in the business of life. And when I say the business of life, I am talking a little bit about life insurance, but also all things life. Uh, Drew, recently on a LinkedIn post, you had a mention of having a conversation around the F's of life. And I believe they were fitness, finance, family, and fun. Or there more? Finance. There might have been more. I think those. I think those were the four. I could be wrong. You, fill us Fun. in. Fill us in. Faith, family, fun, fitness, and finances. Ah, thank you. I missed faith. Let's the f bombs. I know those are the f bombs. Those are my favorite f bombs. Talk to me about how faith has played a role in your life. You know, all of the personal development, all of the peak performance, all of the Tony Robbins all of Think and Grow Rich, all of Napoleon Hill, it does come from the holy days. It comes from the holy books, the Bible, the Torah. And um, I think fake it till you make it is so inauthentic and it's become so tongue in cheek. I like faith it till you make it. Ooh, and if you have faith and you believe, um, here's some million dollar tips. I think people believe their doubts and they doubt their beliefs. But I think if you train yourself to believe your beliefs and doubt your doubts, you can conquer anything. I love that. I feel like that should be a children's book, even though it applies to all of us. This is like a Dr. Seuss saying, except it's going to be Drew, Drew Berman. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I feel like faith absolutely plays a part in our lives. And for those of you listening, you might be like, I don't believe in a God. or I don't believe in anything. You're not hearing me. I'm not, I wasn't talking specifically about God. I'm talking about faith because faith is a belief. It's a belief in something, ideally something unseen. And so many of you, per Drew's little mantra there, say it again, Drew. It was so good. I think, I feel like the people need to hear it one more time. Well, yesterday I was on a conference and one of the peak top performer guys from the Tony Robbins world said, you can rewire your brain so that like a rubber band, you elastically get back into, oh, everything's going to work out. The universe is in my favor. The universe wants me to win. Oh, that's my default. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. And I think most people have these beliefs and these doubts creep in. And I think people believe the doubts. And then you have doubts about life and like, is it going to work out? And I'm kind of doubtful. And you start to believe that the doubts are true. But what if you started doubting your doubts and believing your beliefs? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, yes, and yes. And I hope you guys are really hearing this because some of you are creating stories that don't exist or don't exist yet and may never exist, but because you're choosing to buy into them, you are creating some, some faith, faith around these things, these, and usually not good things. Sometimes your mind is going towards the complaining or the criticizing often of your own self. And so this is a really beautiful way to try and turn that around, turn that frown upside down. <laughs> I posted on LinkedIn yesterday. What if, dot, dot, dot. What if it all works out? That's right. That's right. Because and, so many times yeah. people are saying, what if it doesn't work out? But what if it does? Oh, what if it does? And I have to tell you all, I am 47 years young and I have been definitely a person who is a, Ooh, that, that glass is not just half full. It is, it's close to overflowing type of girl. Uh, I had someone say, man, Mary, like, could anything go wrong and you not find the silver lining? And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I guess not. I guess I'm always finding the silver lining. I think that's one of my gifts is finding the silver lining. If my house burned down tomorrow, I would be like, well, I guess I'm going to buy some new furniture. <laughs> and I think that that's the right attitude. Like I look back on my life and I say, what have been the, the guiding posts what have been the guiding lights that have just made life more pleasant. And it's been the ability to look forward and also be present and say, wow, 
where is all the good that I can find in this human in front of me, in this work that I'm doing, in the work that's showing up, in this situation that is shifted or changed out of something that I wasn't expecting. And also being able to look back and not have regrets about all of the experiences I've had, but instead go, wow, where are all these juicy lessons that I can really take with me and either use them for helping someone else, use them for helping myself going forward, using them for advancing humanity. Like that's, that's the place. So, oh, I hope y'all will lean into your faith because that's such a good one. That's such a good one. All right, let's tackle the next one. What is the uh, family? Talk to me about the family one. What's your, what's your mantra around family? Well, this is 2024, right? So the, uh, one of the comedy theory, you know, series is, uh, you know, modern family and, um, today's modern family can be a, a single person, you know, uh, mixed marriages, sure. multiple ethnicities, um, multiple different types of parents, multiple different types of, you know, humans and who identifies and all that. And in business, uh, I've been saying this for 20 years cause I build teams. I build companies. I build communities. So I always say, we don't just build a business. We build community and we don't just build community. We build family. And if you can build that culture in your working environment, then people will go to the end of the earth to, to fight the battle with you and family to us, to me means open arms, all are welcome, no judgment. And it's sometimes a battle because sometimes we have we have given family and sometimes we have chosen family. You, Mary D, are my chosen family. Like you're, you, you and I can do life together in a, in a big professional way. And um, I try to honor and respect. I think it's just honor, and respect, family, all inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. I have a great friend of mine who is also family that I choose. And her and I were just talking about how, you know, we live, we live on the same property together. So we are very close in proximity. We see each other all of the time. We go on our daily hikes together, almost always. And this is, it was such a beautiful reflection for her yesterday. She looked at me and she goes, I can't think of a time where we actually have had a major conflict. And I was like, no, you're right. Because we love and respect each other. And we know how to operate in love and respect. And when you operate in love and respect, there doesn't have to be conflict. There can be some disagreements and we can lovingly disagree with each other. Uh, we can have conversations. I said, I feel like anything that shows up, we know that we're on the same team. And that's the biggest part. I think when you look at organizations, I see this all the time, y'all. In organizations, when I walk into an organization where people actually are operating as a team, they are actually, they have each other's back. Um, everyone can share the spotlight. It's not just one person versus other cultures in certain companies. People are stepping all over each other because they're not on the same team. You got to be on the same team. And that applies in marriage, business, and life. You know, um, I just saw Bob Marley, One Love. Nice. And uh, I'm a big uh, you know, fan for my whole life of the music. But I never really knew the man and I re never really knew how iconic he was in Jamaica as a, a world um, pe you know, advocate for peace and one love. They were in very challenging times, not dissimilar to what's going on here politically in the United States. And he did a concert called One Love and he had both opposing leaders come mm -hmm. out on stage and all three of them held hands. And it was unheard of and it was really uh, moving. Imagine if that happened in the United States of America in today's political climate. Imagine if we had a Bob Marley type of one love and the, uh, the two, uh, two big ones going for the, the White House seat were on one stage holding hands with a, a, a united singer. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, that would be that would be incredible. That's what that would be. That would be, it would be a shift. It would be a shift that honestly, from a consciousness level, we need, we, we need. need. And uh, it's one of those things where I go, oh, look, I know that whoever is in the presidential seat, that's a hard, that is a hard role, y'all. I don't care who you are. It's going to have so much criticism, no matter what side of the fence you're on. It's just a hard job. And 
it's also the job that represents the United States as a country. 